Hello everyone! Welcome back to Astashkine Cakes channel. My name is Anna and I teach sugar artists how to create beautiful modern cakes and flowers using wafer paper. And today I'm going to answer one of your most asked questions. Can you put wafer paper in the fridge? So stay tuned till then to know all my secrets. And in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use wafer paper and create a flexible and modern bow and how to shape it using just a few simple tools. So let's begin. I'm going to use just regular wafer paper. This is a four or eight and a half by 11 inches. And I'm going to use just a regular paper cutter, but feel free to use sharp scissors. And I'm going to cut my wafer paper in half and then in half again to create a few stripes so I can make my bow and I can make my ruffles. So. I cut my wafer paper in half and I'm going to cut it in half again and you don't need to be exact or precise because we are going to shape it and wafer paper still going to take on another shape a little bit differently. So here I have my four pieces and I'll cut a few more just to have something to play with. So my wafer paper stripes are roughly eight and a half inches by three inch wide. And for my first piece, I'm going to use the full width and see how it is going to work on my cake because roughly I want my bow to go somewhere in here and I'll start with a full length stripe. And I'm going to show you two different ways how to shape wafer paper. One is using just regular cloth steamer or you can boil a pot of water. And the other one is using airbrush and we are going to color our wafer paper as well. So let's start with our steamer. I have just regular cloth steamer and I'm going to take my stripe of wafer paper, bring it to a boil. Just be careful because it's hot, but I'm going to bring my wafer paper just one and first. You can see it starts to curl because I wanted to introduce some moisture into wafer paper to be able to shape it first and remove from my steam. So I shape my first part and I'm going to do this to the other part. So I steam both sides and shape it. So now I have this shape and I'm going to bring this into my steam again and shape it to create a ball. So I'm going to remove this from the steam to let it dry. And I have my first part for my ball. You can see it's already dry. And to stick both sides together, I'm going to use water. I'm going to take small amount of water on my brush and apply it here to stick both sides of my wafer paper ball. If you don't want to color your wafer paper, you can use a touch of piping gel or you can use a little bit of water on the other side again and stick it to your cake and start assembling all your pieces on your cake. But I'm going to color, so I'm going to use my airbrush and I'll show you how to do that. For my color, I wanted to use this blush gel color and because I do not have the exact color in airbrush color I'm going to mix my own airbrush color for wafer paper by taking small amount of this blush color and mixing in with my AC tonic in a bottle and I'm going to shake it if you have dilution solution or any liquid that can turn your gel color into airbrush color, feel free to use that. I prefer to use my acetonic because you can see now I have this airbrush color mixed from gel color and my acetonic mixture. So now I'm going to use this in my airbrush. This is just cordless airbrush. I will put a link down below if you don't want to use that as well. And I want my wafer paper color to be relatively light, so I'm going to test it on a scrap piece of wafer paper first. And because I wanted you to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm adjusting my color and making it a little bit darker so you will be able to see how I'm coloring my wafer paper. 
And I'll start with the same way. So I'll take my piece of wafer paper, the same length, and I'm going to airbrush one side of my wafer paper to shape it. And you can see I'm doing just light passes of this wafer paper conditioner mixture. And while it's soft, I'm going to shape it one side and the other side. And then I'm going to bring my paper bowl together and stick it because I airbrush it. I have just enough moisture to be able to shape it. Make sure that you like the shape before placing on your cake because when wafer paper dry, it will become a little bit too brittle and harder to play around. So I'm going to gently tuck it and this is going to be my first layer for my wafer paper bowl. Like this. Again, I'm going to take just a small amount of water, add here in between layers and stick both pieces together. And I will set it aside to dry and make a few more to assemble on a cake. And if you wanted to make a smaller piece, what you can do is you can just, again, airbrush this. But then when you're going to shape your wafer paper, start a little bit higher. So you have a longer tail on both sides and then pinch it together. You can see that here my tail is longer compared to the first one, so when I'm going to place them together, this layer is going to be shorter than the first one. And for my decorations, I wanted to shape it a little bit differently, so I'm going to cut my wafer paper on an angle like this, and I'm going to cut this tail in to shape like this, and I'm going to airbrush this as well. All I wanted to do is just pinch it here at the bottom and make sure that I like the way it curls. So I'm going to place it flat on my table to dry before attaching to my cake. So now that I have all my wafer paper pieces for my bowl, I'll start assembling them on a cake. And I will start with the largest one and the shape I like. I will need my wafer paper pieces. So for my first layer, I'm going to use a touch of piping gel to attach my pieces to my cake. And also I would probably need a few toothpicks to help it keep in place. So let's start with our first one and I'm going to place it somewhere in here. So I'm going to take a small amount of piping gel here and I think that the first one is the most important one and if you need to give it some time to dry, feel free to do that because sometimes piping gel is not sticky enough. And I'm going to take a toothpick and attach here to help it keep in place. So now for my second piece, I'm going to start cutting in a little bit because for this tail and for this part, it's a little bit thicker and I want it to be a little bit more delicate. So I'm going to cut it here and apply my piping gel on the back side before sticking on a cake. Same for my next piece. And I would probably want to place one of these pieces on top before I'm going to add another layer. And if you need to reshape it or you don't like the shape, feel free to use just a touch of your airbrush. So you can airbrush it again or you can use a little bit of steam if you wanted to reshape it again before placing on your cake. And now I'm going to take my smaller pieces and again cut them and shape so I can place them in between. And probably another smaller one here in the center. And I'm going to attach it with a little bit of water because water will help wafer paper stick to wafer paper. And another toothpick to hold it in place. So you can see it comes together relatively quickly and then you can add your final touches. You can cut it or shape it whatever you want it to. And you can make your wafer paper bow suitable for any design you want it to. And now that I have all my pieces in place, I'm going to leave it to dry for maybe half an hour and then my design is complete.
And the most asked question, can you put vapor paper in the fridge? And the answer is yes, you can. But you need to be mindful about a few things I'm going to share with you. First, you need to know your humidity level. I use this humidity checker that I can keep in my studio or put it in my fridge. And I always check my humidity level be before placing my cakes in the fridge. Usually anything above 65% humidity is a little bit too high. And below that, it's totally fine to keep it in the fridge. I never keep any fresh produce in my fridge or anything that produces or gives away moisture. So my paper paper is relatively safe. Second suggestion I can give you is to make your flowers in advance. If you're going to make with a paper flowers or any decorations you wanted to put it on a cake in the fridge, just keep in mind that it might take a few extra days for moisture to evaporate. So I suggest you to make your flowers or decorations three to five days in advance before placing on the cake and putting in the fridge. And if you live in a very humid environment, above 65% humidity, and you use my AC tonic recipe for the conditioner, I would suggest you to use less glycerin because glycerin is a humectant and it attracts all the moisture from the air and reabsorbs into your wafer paper. And another suggestion, you can be a little bit more generous with your cornstarch application when you're making your flowers. Just keep in mind that applying cornstarch will make you your wafer paper brittle so be careful with that and another suggestion is i would not put my wafer paper on a buttercream and keep it in the fridge overnight just because i do not know how it's going to behave and typically i do not make buttercream cakes i work with fondant and on fondant cakes you can see in 24 hours my decorations still look the same because my humidity level is manageable and all my decorations stay totally fine in my fridge. And if you have any questions or concerns about working with wafer paper, leave me a comment down below. I would love to have a chat with you. And thank you so much for joining me for this week's demonstration tutorial. I hope I answered a lot of your questions about working with wafer paper. My name is Anastashkina and I'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.